there are some uh, exciting questions for you. So um, uh, one uh, asking, are there any safety issues with making cheese from unpasteurized milk? Yeah, no, definitely, uh, Pranavi. So it's uh, especially in our country. So let me get, let me um, retrace. So raw milk cheese is the best kind of cheese that you can do. And I told you the reason why, because that cheese has all, um, uh, that raw milk has all the goodness of what the cattle has had and it's the more in its most most natural state and of course when i'm talking about raw milk it has to be of uh, cattle that has been taken care of is also it's ethically uh, ethically been milked it is hormone free it is not injected with a million things so everything the the, the food that the cattle eats and then which translates into the raw milk uh, makes it makes it beautiful and um, uh, you know powerful so that translates into a good into the best kind of cheese example parmigiano reggiano now with india and our climate and our infrastructure and logistics it can be very difficult so if a person has access to a dairy farm for example if you have your own farm or you have access to it and you build a facility or you have a cheese room on that on those premises and you immediately use that raw milk to make cheese it's known as farmstead cheese um, and that is going to be and of course you you make sure the uh, controls and the um, hazard controls and all of that is taken care of then it is a beautiful and good and safe cheese to eat but otherwise um, you know, it can get tricky because cheese, because milk itself is so uh, fragile. You, uh, you know, you leave it out for a few hours and the cultures, the bacteria have multiplied uh, because, you know, they're feeding on the sugars in the milk. So they are going to multiply. So it, it, if, if all safety measures are taken care of and if you have a cheese facility or a room right next to it or you have access to, uh, you have a proper cold chain access an assured access of raw milk, then you can make, you can safely make raw milk cheese. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I guess pasteurized is fine, but you don't want to ultra pasteurize it and kill everything. You don't want to kill the good and the bad. Um, then what you're left with is just a white liquid. None of that goodness. Um, yeah. There, you know. None of that flavor and deliciousness. Yeah, none of that is there. Um, so talking about like microorganisms and um, safety and things like that, uh, we have another question from Pranavi asking, how do you make sure only a specific organism uh, like the rock 40 uh, infects the blue cheese? Um, I mean, some of these, some of these recipes are age old. So for us, it's, it's, it, they've actually made it easier for us. We know which culture is affecting the milk in a certain way when you have the certain right temperatures. And then in the aging room, you have the um, specific temperature and humidity. So it's kind of like the recipe is already there for us. They've done the math. They've done the uh, chemistry for us. But it's always, always fun to see how uh, when you use maybe two cultures and mix it and you know come up with a new cheese there's in fact a brie that is made using uh using the penicillin camembert tea and penicillin uh rogue 40 so it's called uh it's a blue brie essentially it's it's a blue cheese and it's a brie uh has a blue rind so there are um there are pathways laid out for us if we want to make those cheeses but i feel Honestly, our milk is different. Our cultures are different. Our ambient cultures are different. So no matter what we make, it is going to be a new and different cheese. And you can totally experiment. I'm sorry, that, did I answer the question? Or... Yeah, I, I think definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, when So I, I was wondering if we could also hear a little bit, I, I think I saw your post a couple of um, days ago talking about how the farm uh, in Chennai officially has like the first, uh, was it 
uh, watched okay. Ryan Cheese. So coming to that, uh, uh, Pranavi asked, "Why do we wash the Ryan? Why do we wash the Ryan in a washed Ryan Cheese?" That's a good question. That's maybe you can question. also tell us a bit about how the farm has the first washed Ryan Cheese in India. The farm, so the, okay, we can <laughs> tell you about the farm in Chennai. They started in 1977, I believe, and uh, I I will check that. But they started uh, many many years ago, and they had um, they started as a dairy, and they now make some of the best cheese in the country. Um, they they have again their farmstead, so they have access to amazing milk, and they have worked very hard, and they are uh, churning out some brilliant cheeses. One and one of their latest ones is called Piccolo. Uh, which means little, and it's the size. It kind of it's it's a small round that fits uh, in your palm, and it's I believe India's first washed rind cheese. And coming to the question of why they are washed, so like I said, each rind is formed to it is formed as a security as a protective layer to protect what's inside, which is what we want. It's you know, it's kind of like how a fruit has a skin and it's kind of protecting what's inside, right? So um, a lot of these rinds are, so a lot of these rinds are formed naturally and we need to maintain it. The idea is when you're making cheese, it is the controlled spoilage of milk. We have spoiled the milk, just technical terms. We have sp split it essentially. And at each and every step till the cheese is ready, we are controlling every, every step. So when we are giving the bacteria a free hand to develop into a rind or develop those veins, but we have to make sure that like, we're not, you know, like those holes that you saw on the blue cheese, they're tiny. They're not big gaping holes. You want to give them oxygen, but you don't want them to, to, you want to control the amount that goes in. So same way in, in any of these washed rind cheeses, you, you or the bloomy rinds, you're patting it periodically, you're flipping it so that every surface gets exposed, every surface gets patted down. There are certain cheeses that even develop mucor, which is cat's whiskers, which it's called, and you have to pinch it and remove it. So there are these hair, you know, tiny hair, whisker hair, like um, uh, bacteria that develop. It's, it's quite wow. powerful. And um, in America, when I was when I was taking care of the cheeses, I removed them. In France, when I went to, um, uh, you know, learn more about it, they patted it down. So different countries also have different ways of taking care of these of the same type of cheese as well. And um, and you want to. For some of these harder cheeses and the washed rind cheeses, you, you don't want the rind to split or crack. So that's why you periodically uh, wash them, keep them moist, because they are in that in that room where they can dry out. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the reason. I, I think that's that's really fascinating and, and also as you were talking, little babies, you have to take care of them. <laughs> and, and they're so different. Yeah, and they're so different from each other, right? I mean, they're like each little children of their own. Each one has their own tantrums and each one has their own uh, care protocol. Yeah, and, and coming to that, like, so like when we say paneer or when we say um, yeah. uh, chena, ricotta, even though they might have, even within paneer, there are so many different mm -hmm. processes. Uh, they are similar. Yeah, they are similar, but they're different. Uh, could you talk about... Um, Maybe these these cheeses that we have. Also, we have a question from Kunal who asks about yes. Shrikhand. Uh, since it's made from hung curd, uh, is it also a cheese similar to cheese? So it would fall under a dairy product because um, w with cheese you need there has to be some sort of fermentation that takes place. So technically, the the you know the the curd is fermented to make it a curd. So it there's a little bit of a gray line, I in my opinion, but I would I would put Shrikhand as a dairy product. Mm. And and what about like um, the other fresh cheeses that we have, like chena paneer, ricotta? Um, how like uh, ricotta would be would be uh, ricotta means recooked. 
so when cheese when harder cheese is made uh the leftover whey is reheated and what once they reheat it uh, to that temperature the high temperature the automatically there is a splitting of um you know and then you put some sort of uh, acid uh, you know optionally then the whey splits and all the so- there are leftover solids in the whey that gather together and then you drain that and then that is ricotta so that's that's actual ricotta but um, there are versions that are being made uh, which are known as whole milk ricotta where whole milk is split and it's very similar in that sense to uh, the new age paneer which is split with an acid with lemon or vinegar but uh, traditionally paneer is made with uh, buttermilk you know using buttermilk to split the milk i think uh, uh, aditya raghavan writes a really yes. lovely yes. article about yes. that and a uh, session on uh, indian indian dairy and the science behind it i i will sell the stuff <laughs> it uh, and it also we we've put it on our timeline as well because oh, it's such God. a important part of um yeah. the whole conversation around cheese um speaking about like cultures as well are there any cheese indian cheese cultures that are kind of being developed right now for mm-hmm. specific kinds of indian cheese that's really interesting i i had been um reading up on that lately about is there are there indian because it it totally makes sense because we have our own um i mean you know each each region has their own uh flora fauna and uh you know different different environments so it does make sense and there are certain articles which i will i will share with with you all on um there are there are articles in scientific journals that are talking about indian specific cultures but how widely they are used in cheese making i i don't think so not at the moment not in at least not in artisanal cheese making but uh, that would be really cool it's also uh, the trend in che- in the cheese making world not a trend it's uh, a, it's not a trend but it's it's something that is talked about a lot uh, especially last year at uh, the american cheese conference that i went for we were talking about natural cultures and not using cultures from companies but developing your own cultures that is what the traditional cheese makers across the world do and sort of trying to encourage cheese makers and younger cheese makers to make your own cultures uh, which is similar to what we we spoke about in terms of if is there an indian culture super in- interesting i um i'm going to go back to the cheese map because i i'd like to share like some of the findings yeah. i think we had uh through this this journey and and uh, i also have the short uh film uh that uh dr rolfson uh had that i yes. would uh, love to share with you as well um so yeah so i think i don't know mansi about you but i think that through the process we found that this is quite a gruer gray area of cheese in the sense of um i'm trying really hard <laughs> in sense of um like what does it mean to be a cheese maker in india right and we saw so many stories of triumph in reviving indian cheese in the indian cheese movement we've saw so many stories of of hardship and we learned i think how cheese was used to conserve biodiversity and how chefs were using it in in different ways to discover their own roots um and and i think that i i'd like to like point out through this timeline i think three main like observations or insights we had one thing was especially to do with with indian cheese was we we virtually visited uh, samuel yonzen um uh, who is who says he's reviving the mountain cheese movement and we realized that this cheese called kalimpong there was actually no such thing as kalimpong cheese anymore and so it basically was a myth being circulated through repurposed news articles but by virtually connecting with um with with samuel we could understand what he was trying to do to revive the movement uh, and actually uh 
learn to make the original kalim original in in quotes but uh, kalimpong cheese that was being made 40 years ago by the swiss um uh by by the swiss mission um and trying to revive this culture of uh of of hip, uh, of mountain cheese um another thing that i think we 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 talk about a lot is is about uh, indian versus indigenous cheese you know like i think there is this long standing debate of how, what do we call indian cheese uh, can we call it cheese made in a european style indian and i feel like um Yeah. even the so called indigenous cheeses at some point of time i guess came from uh, a foreign influence yeah. right um and i think one of my favorite observations that uh, we 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 made was was uh, paneer because we we talked about so many other cheese so much and i think there was one point uh, through this map where we were like we haven't spoken about paneer at all like we haven't started even mapping uh uh, uh Uh, the the communities that make paneer ac- across across india and it's it's we we actually kind of it, in our minds it was it was it was forgettable it was on vegetarian menu was like what was it cheese or vegetable uh, in the <laughs> days oh my god i totally i totally remember that moment we were like wait is it paneer and indian cheese as well why have we not mapped it oh my god we're going to go crazy because there's so many paneer makers in the country of course and Uh, and 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 you're you're right like it's 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 you know considered a veg it, a vegetable which is so weird because it's so it's just paneer in itself is is a fantastic well in fact that's that's a that's the most brilliant article i have read on paneer uh by by adi yes uh yeah it uh, there's I, there's it's again not- the link in the map yeah <laughs> we encourage everyone to read it it's 100%. it's an absolutely fascinating article about like the origin and origin of the cheese and and how it differs right how you make it differs for exactly like any cheese from community to community yeah, yeah. and and another like i think the last observation or that we kind of got so far from this timeline was coming back to dr rolfson was was tech for good you know how cheese is being used um in 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 conservation and um how you you it doesn't necessarily have to come from tradition tradition is great but i mean we can create new ones if if it is meant to help communities and and uh and and used and cheese being used as a medium to to sustain livelihoods uh and i think that that's so that was for me really powerful um in 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 our in our learning journey i think um i'm going to try and see if i can um share this video that dr rolfson said and then i guess we can um wrap up aur achhe jagah pe saarte aur unko hamesha hi wo chota hota tha bhi unko achhe tarah se rakh de Traditionellem Wissen zufolge äh, fressen die Tiere von 36 verschiedenen äh, Pflanzen, das sind fast alles Bäume, die auch in der Ayurveda äh, benutzt und besch- äh, benutzt werden und das ist natürlich ganz klar, dass sich dann also wenn wenn Kamele diese Heilpflanzen fressen, dass sich das dann auch in der Qualität der Milch niederschlägt. Das ist jetzt genau der Punkt, an dem wir ansetzen, weil es also global äh, wird 
Kamelmilch, also als Superfood gehandelt. Und es gibt sehr viele wissenschaftliche Veröffentlichungen, die auch äh, belegen, dass Kamelmilch bei vielen Krankheitsbildern, vor allen Dingen Autoimmunkrankheiten, sehr gute Resultate erzeugen kann. फरक ही आया पहले तो हमारे ऊँटों को बेचते और मेले बिकते और दूसरे भी हर एक काम में ऊँट ज्यादा बिकते तो हमारे वो घर गुजारा अच्छा चलता और अभी ऊँट तो बक रहे नहीं तो अभी समय हमारा तो खराब ही अभी ये भी पंद्रह ऊँटों के लिए हम सोलह सौ घंटा इसके पीछे उबा हो तो है नहीं तो बस यही खत्म होने की संभावना और फिर भी ये हमारे साथ है इधर हमारे पास में एल पी पी एस का जब ये काम चल रहे नहीं तो फिर भी ये भी नीर ये ज्यादा खत्म हो रही और काम उनके बारे में है तो एल पी पी एस के ऊपर ही है ये थोड़ा बहुत जो भी उठ दिया है एल पी पी एस ने पीछे ही दिया है हमारे यहाँ इलाका रिवाज नहीं तो रहने वाला ही नहीं था हम तो साफ परिस्थिति में अपने खत्म ही हो चुके थे सिर्फ पांच रखे थे फिर एल बी पी एस ने उदूत चलू किया और फिर बाद में धीरे धीरे पंद्रह बीस ये फिर भी रखा है Wir bemühen uns also jetzt hier in Indien dafür, das Bewusstsein zu entwickeln und haben deswegen auch diese Kumpel gar äh, Camel Dairy äh, in die Welt gesetzt, die erste Kamelmolkerei in Indien. Und wir sehen also den lokalen Erfolg, dass die Familien, die in der Lage sind, äh, uns ihre Kamelmilch zu verkaufen, denen geht es wirtschaftlich erheblich besser und die bemühen sich auch darum, ihre Herden wieder zu vergrößern. अभी जो चल रहे हैं वो चीज तो अच्छी है जो ऊँटों के ये जो मदद कर रहे हैं और वो दूध बिक रहे हैं तो वो तो अच्छा ही है जो इसको कोई सरकार इसको ले सकती है छोटी सी डेयरी जब तो ऊँट ले सकते Wir zeigen, dass es möglich ist, also durch eine Entwicklung des Marktes für Kamelmilch, das Kamel in Rajasthan zu erhalten. Wir zeigen das hier auf der regionalen Ebene in unserem kleinen Umfeld. Aber um wirklich eine Wirkung zu haben, die ganz Rajasthan betrifft, muss sich der Markt für Kamel nicht äh, ganz erheblich vergrößern. Und das versuchen wir, also mit, mit aller Kraft, aber unsere finanziellen Mittel sind auch beschränkt eben. Musik